So this is just a really quick video to show you how to reference .NET Core class libraries in standard like .NET Framework apps such as WPF apps. So this has been supported for a while but it's it's very undocumented if you will. It's a very um, unclear way of, of how you, you reference things. So we'll get started, get straight into it. Let's just make a WPF app and we'll just do it as standard. So we're in Visual Studio 2017, uh, which y you'll need to do this. Uh, you can you can work around it, but just install Visual 2017 if you're on an older version. Then check your solution compiles. And then if we just went ahead, right clicked on the solution, add a new project, and we'll make a core class library this time. Um, for some reason it doesn't put, when you create another one, it doesn't put it in the projects folder. It puts it in the folder above. So I'm just going to browse and put it in the projects folder where the other ones are. And then this will just be a simple class with a class 1, which I guess we can do public static test. Let's just make some kind of test function. Oh. Helps if you actually make it a function. And then in here, uh, let's do, well, let's just return a value. Probably the simplest thing. And then we know it's, you know, we're getting the data between the two applications. And then compile and make sure that compiles. And everybody will get to this stage. And typically the next thing you'll do is right click on references, add references, and you'll try and reference this project. And then you build, you can see a exclamation here, and you've also got this error message, you can't target this .NET Core. So you go, okay, then let's... Uh, something you might try is to change the class libraries framework version here. You might also try and change the WPF application framework here. I'd recommend changing it to at least 4.6.2. And if you install what's called, if you simply Google for .NET Framework 4.7 Developer Pack and you download and install that, that will give you this option to target 4.7 as well. But 4.6.2 comes as standard in, .NET, uh, in Visual Studio 2017. So if we simply select that one, and you'd think maybe that'll fix it, but it still doesn't. Now, even though you can reference it, what you can't do is reference it directly. You can't reference this project here, which is slightly annoying. Uh, but what you can do is reference a NuGet package. So first let's just delete that reference. And now what you do in the .NET Core project, is if you go to package here, you want to generate a NuGet package on build. And this is the description you fill out with everything you want. That will appear in the NuGet package manager. So we'll leave it as class library 1 for now, that's fine. And if we compile, it will still build, we've not got the reference at the minute. Then if we right click on the project and go open folder in. And then we go to bin debug. And you can see here this this is your NuGet package. So there's your output. And then this is your NuGet package. Now you see currently the output is .NET, uh, sorry, .NET Core App 1.1. Well we also need to create a package for uh, 4.6.2. So if we go to Google and we go to this page here, docs.microsoft.com, en-us, nougat schema, target frameworks. You get this target frameworks page. And this gives you this list of, these are the values that we need in our project. So we just jump back to Visual Studio a moment. If we right click on the .NET Core project and edit class library, or ed edit your project name.csproj, You'll see by default you've got target framework. You change that to target frameworks, and now you put a semicolon. We can now put multiple, and you can see by default we've got net core app 1.1. If we go back to here and we do a search net core app, you can see this is what it's generating. It's generating a, a class library, a, a .NET Core class library. We can generate all these different packages. Um, for different, you know, if you want to reference the .NET Core in different versions. 
So we will pick the, simply go to the framework itself, and then we're referencing it as a class library. So we want to add this string here, the net462. Paste that in there, save. Reload all, and compile. And now when we go to here, you can now see we've got a effectively a DLL uh, for this that will support the standard .NET framework 4.6.2 and onwards. So then you might think, well, we've finally done that. Can we now just reference uh, the class library again? So let's give that a go. And you'll see you still get the error. So at this point, if you've got this far, most people just give up and get really annoyed. Um, so it's actually not complaining at compiling. We just got an exclamation there. So if we run, everything runs. So let's try and actually access this then. So if we then do var a equals class library one dot class one dot test. And let's see if we get the information back. So now you can see we've effectively managed to link a .NET Core app to a WPF app. And the only downside here is you've got this exclamation, which doesn't really give you any information. Uh, and trying to find that information is, you know, the tooltips don't seem to give anything. It's, so what we can try is simply close and reopen the whole solution. So if we go to uh, file close solution and we reopen this solution let's see if that exclamation has gone so you see you've got this exclamation it's all working and you've got a direct reference but this is not technically the way you'd, you'd typically reference so this seems to work and this will probably work in future versions like very near future where you can simply reference at this point and you don't need the nougat package so you could untick this you know nougat package you wouldn't necessarily need it so if, this, if you're okay seeing this and you're happy to work through it and it seems to work for you, that's fine. If you want to do it the more official way, if you will, you wouldn't have a reference like that. You'd delete that. And instead, when you're generating this Nougat package, here, you want to reference this Nougat package, which will stay up to date all the time because it's being built all the time. The only thing is then, if you go to... if I just, I've just copied this path here which is the path to this folder. And then if we right click on the WPF app and go manage Nougat packages, and then you can see we're searching here for which source. If you click settings, you can add, you can see we've got specific uh, locations here. Now we can add a, a location and we can simply set this location to uh, class library. And we'll just call it class library one. And it's not really a nice way of doing it, just having a, um, you know, a direct link in here for every project that you do for local packages. But at the moment, that's how it works, and that's how you can get it working. The other option is you could have it compiling the, either compiling the Nougat Package Manager in here. You could have this compiling to a different location, or you could simply have a build event on post build to copy this folder or you know specifically this and this and this uh, to a, a more generic place like I've created on my C drive just called local packages so you, you could do multiple things to streamline that process but for quickness and to show you in this video I've simply added a direct link to this folder so that it finds oh, I've closed it now but it, it finds the package in this folder so now if we go to the drop down of sources and select class library one. Let's say not found. I think we might just have to put it inside a subfolder. So if we, again, a bit nasty, but if we just go to one folder up, say, and update that, will that work? And it sometimes just needs refreshing. So it should find. Oh, there we go. So I was uninstalled. So browse, it's found class library one. So let's just double check if that works with the debug because sometimes it can be a bit funny on the structure of uh, where the nougat packages are so that's fine it's, it's happy just pointing directly to that folder so finally we have a effectively a local package of this class library that we can install like any other nougat package 
And now you can see it's installed. So if we then update our class library to 2 and compile, let's see if we get the up-to-date string. If we had a breakpoint, it would help. So you hover over, and you can see we've got the old one. And that's to be expected, because this is a NuGet package. The way we've referenced is more of a, you know, it's a package ready to be published. And even though it's regenerated the package, it hasn't updated, because we haven't changed, like, a version number. So if we went to the packages, it still thinks it's the same version, still thinks it's the exact same file. So if we uninstall and reinstall, and run... Then you get the latest one. So forcefully updating uh, obviously fixes it. What you'd typically do is you'd, you'd make this class library. And whenever you've got a change that you then want to push. Because that's just how everything typically works these days. You make a, uh, you know, a package. Like all these are package uh, NuGet packages. The whole of the .NET framework is now NuGet packages. So we'd make a change to our class library. And then we would right click properties. Package. And we would update the package version to 1.0.1. And what you should see then when you build, if we went to manage NuGet packages, you can see now it's got an update, just like you see with all the other NuGet packages that you have. And it's telling us to update. And there's also a hint here to update. So if we run it right now, we'll get the old one with the two string in. And then if we run the update... And then run again. We've got the new string in. So in short, that's how you reference .NET libraries in standard applications. The The best approach is the NuGet package manager, which we've done here. Uh, and But the, rather, the thing that works right now, and I do think they will support it more in future, and I don't even know there's technically any issues, is instead of doing that, so long as you have, so if we uncheck that, save, close. So long as you've right-clicked on your .NET Core application, edited and changed target framework to target frameworks, and then added the .NET 4.6.2 into there, and then in your WPF app, made sure your target 4.6.2, you can then just right-click on the references, add a reference to the class library. And it will allow you to add a reference. It will also allow you to build... And it will also allow it to fully work. So if we had a breakpoint there, I missed that one. We've got a fully working, up-to-date code that doesn't need any kind of um, manual updating of uh, references. The only thing is you get this exclamation mark. And somebody might know the answer to that. I haven't done much research into to what that is, what it's fixing. It could just be a general complaint that you can remove. I mean, we've got add fake assemblies. We can... We can click that. Maybe that gets rid of the, the complaint. Nope. That's just a general tag. So let's just remove whatever that's just done. So you can somebody can have a look at uh, potentially removing this exclamation mark and just post it in the comments if you, you find a way of how. I just simply haven't bothered uh, really trying that. So you've got two options there, but either way now you can reference um, the class libraries. So hopefully that's shown you a way to now reference your .NET Core class libraries in your uh, UI, your front end. And hopefully that was useful. Again, any comments, questions, just leave them below and I'll get back to you.